Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And I'm going to try something a little differently this time. This is still factory sealed. It's a slip joint knife by Boker, Boker Plus lineup. This is the Satos or Satos or however you want to say it. And uh, I'm going to do the unboxing for you. But as always, I review these knives after I've tested them. So I'm going to be doing a thorough test of this before I get to the review part. But I'll give you my first impressions right away. And then in a flash of a second, you'll see the rest. But I think you can figure out how that works because you're not a bunch of idiots. You're knife guys and gals. You guys are smart. So let's get to it. There's the edge of the box. You can see all the information there. And uh, it's still sealed. Focus down here. Come on. There you go. We've got the Boker seal on there. Uh, I've got one of my other slip joint knives. Uh, this is the Kensept Weasel. Uh, by the time I get this video done, I'm sure this review is going to be out yet. But this review isn't out yet. I'm doing my testing on it at this very moment. So uh, let's open this up. Yep, there we go. Put that guy away. That's a detent knife. I believe this is a typical old school slip joint style knife. Let's see what we all got in here. Of course, we've got the silica. We've got a tool, which is not uncommon with Boker. Uh, Boker does a pretty good job packaging their knives. It, you know, got the magnetic flap on there and you know that piece up there so put that down their booklet i'm going to put the booklet back in there right away t8 and t6 very very common tool and uh we've got a small slip joint knife what we've got is 440c stainless steel for the blade now that's an old stainless steel that's um what is it, second world war era just after that well right around that time it's it's an old stainless steel but it's quite good. It's got decent durability, decent edge retention, you know, all that stuff, decent toughness. And uh, Rockwell, usually around 58 on this. What we've got is a slight drop point on this. We've got a fuller that comes out almost at the end of the blade. Belly, long straight section, and a little bit of a cutaway here. There's a little bit of a mark there already. That's because there's a pin down here for it to stop on when you close it so the cutting edge doesn't slam into the back. But other than that, it's a typical back spring slip joint knife. And the pocket clip is right side only. It extends out the back there. G10, uh, it comes in black or natural G10. The black is a little bit less money than the natural. And we've got a nice lanyard opening here because the G10's cut away so you can tie off there. So it's a fairly modern slip joint knife of the old school back spring variety. I'll go over the price now. Uh, the price of this thing at White Mountain Knives, $48.76, take off 10% with coupon code CCE, makes it $43.88. Now, I bought mine from White Mountain Knives and uh, you know saved a little bit of money instead of buying it in Canada. Slip joint knife like this, still should not have a problem crossing the border into Canada. But if you're nervous about buying any knives at all from the United States uh, and you're in Canada, Blades Canada has got this for $62.99. The natural G10 version is sold out at Blades Canada right now. The natural G10 version at White Mountain Knives is $52.76, tick off 10%, makes it $47.48 American. So, Give me some time. I'll test it. I'm even going to see how good these uh, screw, if they're very accurate or not, the right size or whatever, or not. And I'll test it and uh, I'll get back to you in just a flash of an eye. All right, as we go over this, you know, I've done my test. Oh, it's a little bit dirty. I've done my testing. I've used it. I'm just wiping it off now. Yeah, I'm using my shirt. Oh, my wife doesn't like it when I use my shirt to wipe the blades, but. Hey, I did. Uh, by the way, there was a titanium version of this. It was an exclusive. Uh, I think it was the same steel. I got to double check that. I don't think so. Anyways, it's sold out. How did it perform in my tests? It did. Oddly, if I was doing it the right hand or the left hand, sometimes it felt different. Uh, I found out why uh, 
I measured the grind angles very shortly after. I usually measure the grind angles one of the first things, but I was playing with it a little bit first. And the grind angles on this are pretty wonky. One side is very variable and fairly shallow. And the other side is, you know, like 25 degrees, a little over 25 degrees on the angle for that one side. So it was not sharpened very well, but I used it and it actually works pretty good. I, I like 440. I don't remember if I said that before. Uh, 440C is a, I don't like 440, to be honest with you. I like 440C. I like this. This is a nice, um, I'm not going to call it small. I'm going to call it a mid-sized, and it's between mid-sized and small-sized knife. A nice slip joint knife for, especially if you want to carry a knife in a place where people are afraid of knives. This you can pull out and people are generally not going to get scared of it. There's no loud clack when you, you know, open it up with your, um, let's see, what do I have on my table still? Oh, I think I put this in the intro, uh, like this. It's just a sudden little click and a visual thing of something moving and that grabs people's attention. Some people don't like that. Uh, by the way, maybe I'll do a tiny bit of a size comparison. You've probably seen the video for this. This I'd call a mid-sized knife, and you know this is a little bit smaller. It's not an awful lot smaller. Like you've got just a little bit of edge there that you don't have on this knife. It's okay. I really like this. The uh, you know blade. It's nice. There's a very tiny bit of flex, and that's because. The body is G10 and this spring, and that's all there is. And so this spring is held on back here in two places. And one place up here is where the pivot is. And uh, that's not part of the spring. The spring is just held on by two screws right here. And so, yeah, there's a little bit of flex, but I don't call it play. Of course, you can create play if you loosen up that pivot pin. You've got a really nice half stop. It... Uh, almost 90 degrees and it's quite nice and when you close it you don't have to be afraid of that edge you know getting smacked into the back of the spring there due to the little stop point there stop pin that comes in right there that's quite nice and uh, it's light it's quite light indeed I'll go through all the measurements later on one of my favorite things about is the fuller we've got two-sided fuller so we don't have the old school nail neck where you're pushing with your nail and you're trying to get it open you're trying to get it open and you're pushing and end up breaking your nail you end up hurting yourself and then it suddenly opens up because the back spring's too strong now the back spring is very very good it's just the right amount of tension for a knife of this size and you can use the flesh parts of your finger and thumb to open it. You don't need to use a nail at all. And it's easy to open and close. Quite safe, simple to use. Uh, safe for people who follow, you know, the standard rules of using any pocket knife. And that is don't put pressure on the spine of the knife unless you are 100% sure that it is in a perfectly locked position. And uh, generally, you're putting pressure on this side of the knife. And if you're putting pressure on this side of a slip joint, it's safe, as safe as a fixed blade. And uh, don't be using a slip joint knife for poking into things. And it's a good knife. So for slicing and cutting, it's okay. For a pocket EDC, it's pretty good. I'll talk about the measurements later on. It's a little bit thick behind the grind for this size of knife. I wish it was, you know, a fair bit thinner. It's right around 20 thou, I think. Well, I'll, when I read the measurements, yeah, just over 20 thou thick right behind the grind. But it cuts and slices well. Uh, the back here, the lanyard hole, it did feel like there's a slight burr. And there you go. I'm just rubbing my nail across that edge. And... You know, I can make it shave off if you can see that little bit of dust there. Yeah, that nail dust. So, tiny bit of file work right here. Even sandpaper could round that off a little bit. This side here is nice and smoothly rounded. Actually, that's on the outside edge, not the hole. So, yeah, they just didn't clean that up. That's a very tiny con. I really don't mind. That's easy, easy to fix. Uh, button screws. Recessed button screws. T6 recessed button screws. 
Uh, here is my really nice T6 screwdriver. You can see the brand name there, Wera. This is the uh, 467. It's the two head T uh, body screw driver. And I put it in there. There's a little bit of play, not a lot. Uh, this tool that was included with it, if we use that, it's more sloppy in there. It's got more play in there. I don't like these tools. These little, you know, L-shaped tools that come with knives. Maybe in an emergency, but be careful. Get a proper set of screwdrivers for when you're taking your knife apart. We've got flat T6 screws here on the pocket clip, but they have a little bit of a recess in them. You even heard that little click go in. They've got enough of a recess that they are quite okay. I wouldn't call them good. I don't prefer T6, but I've had much worse T6 screws on pocket clips than these. Other than that, the pocket clip is really nice. Blade alignment is right down the middle. The G10 slab, you know, slightly chamfered all the way around. Nice texture on it for a good grip. Uh, does the pocket clip work really well? Well, of course, the pocket clip works really well. Let's just show that to you. It climbs over, goes to the full depth, holds well. You know, it's not just going to come free. And it's a good pocket clip. It's right side only. So no left side option. On a slip joint knife, I really don't care. I, I put this in my left pocket. I put it in my right pocket. I used it left-handed, right-handed. It works just fine. Uh, by the way, you might have noticed on the show side here, we've got the Boker Plus logo there. It's not terribly big. It's pretty big for the size of the blade, but not very big. And on this side, it says 440C. But on this side, some of you will have noticed, it says 1181 right there. And I don't know why. If anybody knows why it says 1181 right there, please let me know because the model number is 01B0178. And the O is an O, not a zero. So 01B0178 for the black one. So why does it say 1181 right there? I don't know. You want to see a teardown? Okay, I'll show you a teardown. At least a partial one. There's the teardown. Uh, there's a little steel insert right there for that other pocket clip screw to screw into. Well done. There's the back spring. And, uh, you know, there's the half stop. You can see right there. And when it's fully open, this stop pin, you know, sits right here and it goes in to that hole right there as well. And that stops the cutting edge from hitting in there. It's a very simple design. We've got a phosphor bronze washer. I'm sure there's one on each side. I'm not gonna take it 100% apart. Uh, not that it's terribly hard to put back together again. I just don't like doing it because I'd have to go get some tape to cover up the cutting edge because I don't like risking my fingers, even if it's just going to be a minor cut. There's those two screws that go in there to hold the back spring on, and that spring goes up and down, and that's basically how it works. So, very nicely done. Time to put it back together. Let's do the sizes now. The weight of this knife. 33 grams, 1.16 ounces. So less than one and a quarter ounces. That's pretty nice. Sharpness from the factory, okay, 200 bests. The cutting edge length, a straight line from the heel of the blade to the tip is 64.2 millimeters, 2.53 inches. Uh, the tip of the blade to the closest spot on the G10 handle, 64.9 millimeters, 2.55 inches. The thickness of the blade at the flats, the ricasso, and along the spine here for a ways, that is 2.46 millimeters, 0 0.097, so almost a tenth of an inch. And a tenth of an inch is very common on pocket knives these days. This is not a thin, light, weak blade. Uh, the blade depth this way, it's widest right about there, 13.9 millimeters, 0.547 of an inch. The thickness behind the grind, 0.52 millimeters. 20 and a half thousandths of an inch thin. The grind angles, this side's got an average grind angle of 18.2 degrees. This side's got an average grind angle of 25.4 degrees. Uh, let's talk about this side first. In a way, it was sharpened better than the other side. 
25.5 degrees to 25.3 degrees, 0.2 degrees of angle change along the length of that blade. That's why when I tilt it like this, the entire thing, you know, comes to shine. You know, there you can't see it, and then it shows up all the way along because it's got the same grind angle. That's what optic does. Op that's what optics does. Now take a look at this edge while I tilt it. If you can see it, see this, uh, the heel's in shadow now, it comes back. It might not be super clear, but the grind angle changes all the way along. This side, the grind angle starts at 21.6 degrees, ends over here at 14.8 degrees, 6.8 degrees of change along the length, almost seven degrees of change along the length. But that's extremely common. This is not a rare thing, and I'm not talking about for Boker, I'm talking about for all the brands of knives that I review. It's not a rare thing to see seven degrees of change. It's much more common to see four to five degrees of change. That's extremely common. Bad sharpening is frustrating, but thankfully, I can sharpen knives. If you need your knife sharpened, you can send them to me to sharpen as well. I do custom knife sharpening. Check out CanadianCuttingEdge.com. Brought to you by CanadianCuttingEdge.com. Let's keep going on the dimensions here. Uh, the handle length, 83.9 millimeters, 3.3 inches. The uh, grip area back in here, it's a little bit over 8 centimeters, 80 millimeters, or right around 3 inches, a little over 3 inches, so that's not bad. The thickness of the handle scales on the G10, 8 millimeters even, that's 0.315, so just under a third of an inch. Uh, the handle depth, it's widest right back here. 17.4 millimeters, 0.685 of an inch. And when the knife is closed, it's pretty much in the middle where it's the widest. 19.7 millimeters, 0.775 of an inch. And the total length is about 149 millimeters, which is 5.87 inches. So just about six inches. Like I said, it's not a tiny knife. It is a little, it's small, it's light, it's thin, but it's not delicate, it's not weak and it's useful. I am happy with this thing. Let me just briefly go over the pros and cons one last time. I like the full size, the fuller on both sides. Very nicely done. I'm happy with that. It's got a good size to weight ratio. I didn't show you the balance point, did I? It's got a decent balance point right there. It's comfortable in hand. It's a, got nice fit and finish. Really like that. Good action. Good half stop, you know, stop pin there. It's a modern back spring slip joint and I'm really happy with it. Even having a D-shaped pivot pin with, you know, it, good, it's made well. Uh, some things I don't find too fond of, I don't like T6 screws uh, and I certainly don't like button screws that are recessed, but that's pretty much par for the course these days, especially on the lower cost knives like this one. By the way, the Yusatos is named after Zelos. That's, how, I guess, how to pronounce it. That's one of the sons of one of the Titan gods in Greek mythology. So that means nothing to me, really. I don't really know Greek mythology. And, and I don't really care about Greek mythology. So if you care about it, thanks for caring about it for me. And the other question was, hopefully somebody can help me figure out, why does it say 1181 right there? Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you to my supporters. Those of you who support me on patreon.com slash cce or you've clicked the join button. Thank you for that monthly donation. It really, really does help even though it's only like $2 US a month for you guys. So thank you. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. <laughs>